from CPRI and the CPRI Knowledge Hub, this is Research Minutes, a weekly look at new and important research in education. Today, we look at advanced placement, rapidly expanding in recent years and causing some to question if certain courses can be offered successfully in under-resourced high schools. We've had this broad expansion of AP without a lot of really good causal research to show whether it's effective. So we wanted to have an understanding of do these programs work? Are they effective? And for this paper specifically, what are the potential barriers that schools might have, particularly the schools that are newly offering these classes? We welcome University of Washington researcher Mark Long, whose recent study of AP implementation in 23 schools sought to understand the promise and potential pitfalls of offering high-level science courses for the first time. These schools are able to do something that both the teacher and the students perceive as rigorous. They were also pretty successful in covering science practices and learning objectives, but where they struggled was on the inquiry-based part of the design. Long and I discuss his findings and some important takeaways for school leaders, policymakers, and future research. That's right now on Research Minutes. Hi, and welcome to Research Minutes. I'm Keith Umeller, Managing Editor of the CPRI Knowledge Hub, and today I'm happy to be joined by Mark Long, Professor and Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs with the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance at the University of Washington. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you for having me. So your new study, published in Educational Researcher and co-authored by George Washington University's Dylan Conger and Equal Measures Ray McGee, is titled Life on the Frontier of AP Expansion. Can schools in less resourced communities successfully implement advanced placement science courses? It's one of the first, if not the first, studies of its kind, and it, it touches on a number of important questions currently surrounding AP or advanced placement courses in American high schools. To begin, could we just set the stage a little bit? What's been happening in the world of advanced placement and what led you to conduct this study? AP specifically is interesting because it's expanded very, very rapidly. So now over 70% of high schools and over 90% of students in high schools have access to an AP class of, of, of some type. Um, and we've had this broad expansion of AP without a lot of really good causal research to show whether it's effective. And then more generally, there's been this push to bring more college curriculum into the high school and to improve the ability of students to have a transition to high school either by having like dual enrollment classes or dual credit classes or um, these AP or international baccalaureate programs that try to bring college-like material into the classroom. So we wanted to have an understanding of, do these programs work? Are they effective? And for this paper specifically, what are the potential barriers that schools might have, particularly the schools that are um, newly offering these classes? So as you mentioned in your paper, with that expansion of AP courses, as we've seen in recent years, there has been some some concern or some questions about the fidelity with which those courses can be offered, especially in under-resourced schools. And there were also a number of reforms from the College Board, two specifically, that sought to change the way that AP courses were offered. And one of them is this move to inquiry-based science. So did that play a role in what you were seeking to understand in your study? Yeah. So when we were thinking about it, investigating advanced placement classes generally, we had originally been thinking about, well, maybe we could investigate the entire AP program. But then we realized that that was going to be pretty difficult because of the heterogeneity in AP classes. Um, so we started to think about focusing. And as we were doing that, we recognized that there had been this recent effort by the college board, along with the National Science Foundation, to make the classes shift from being more fact-based to being more inquiry-based so that students could learn to do the practical things that scientists do. And so that gave us an interesting hook to look specifically at biology and chemistry AP classes and see, are these schools able to implement this new curriculum that is more inquiry-based and what might be the limitations they have if they attempt to do so? This work is actually part of a larger study that was launched in 2012, which is examining the impact of those kinds of AP science courses on student outcomes. But in this study specifically, can you just give us maybe a general overview of what it is you were looking to learn and how you went about finding it? We wanted to do a randomized study, um, and we realized that the way that that was going to work 
if we were going to do within school randomization, meaning take students who are eligible to take the class and, and who are interested in taking the class and randomly assign them access to a new class versus have business as usual in the take the non-AP uh, classes. If we we're going to do that, that we would be more successful in getting schools to participate if they were schools that currently weren't offering that class. So that the, the offer for us would be we would help them get this class started and they would participate by doing the randomization. And what that meant in practice then is we got 23 high schools from around the country to add either an AP biology or an AP chemistry class And given that these were high schools that had not previously offered these classes, they tended to be from neighborhoods that were more disadvantaged, lower socioeconomic status, and on average, lower test scores compared to uh, other schools that had uh, were not participating in the study and not participating because they had already offered an AP biology or chemistry class. And you refer to these schools in your paper as frontier schools? Yeah, so you know, in some ways, that's a that that was a bit of a hook uh, using the term frontier schools. But the idea was, we know AP is expanding. So if you if you think about any kind of ex- expansion process, there is a frontier, and we could characterize in some sense the frontier because these were schools who were right at the cusp of being willing to offer these kind of AP classes, but not previously having offered them. So it gave us an opportunity to explore what are these frontier schools like. What are the neighborhoods that they're from? What like? What are the resources available to them like? And in these particular schools, which in some sense, this is where the policy interest should be, is it a good idea to expand into these schools given the resources that they have? So in your research, your team developed a theoretical framework describing essentially the context and the treatments required to successfully implement an inquiry-based AP science course. Could you walk us through what you what you found or what you reported there? Yes. So we kind of looked at what uh, the College Board was putting forward, what other sources were putting forward as the necessary context to produce a well-implemented AP class and what exactly the treatment was uh, that the College Board was trying to design. And we ended up d- um, developing four indicators of context and five indicators of treatment. So the four indicators of context were, are the teachers well-prepared and motivated? Are the students well-prepared and motivated? Do the teachers have sufficient planning time and resources? And do they have a supportive school and district? So those are the context indicators. On the treatment indicators, we were looking at, is the syllabus at a college level and is it inquiry-based? So so does it meet the college board's expectation for what a syllabus should look like? Uh, Second, Is it covering the major science practices and and learning objectives? Uh, Third, is it academically challenging? So does it look like a college course? Fourth, is it doing this project-based and independent classroom activities? So is is it allowing the students to engage with scientific questions as a scientist might be in a real world setting? And finally, the fifth indicator of the treatment was, are they integrating technology into their classes? And so we're looking from a variety of different sources of data, both survey-based, both uh, review of syllabi, as well as doing qualitative interviewing, using a variety of sources to evaluate whether the schools had the context necessary and whether they were implementing the treatment as designed. As you you just alluded to, the next part of, of this study involved evaluating AP implementation in these frontier schools and uh, seeing if they met the, those criteria that you just laid out. So I think our audience might be interested to know, you know, what did you, what did you learn there? Yeah, so uh, a lot of the news is good news. So for the most part, we learned that the teachers were well-prepared and motivated, um, and we learned the students were well-prepared and motivated. So for the typical school and these frontier schools, those were good. Um, in terms of planning time and resources, most of the schools had sufficient, but there were a number of schools that had very low, or they described as having very low uh, planning time and resources. And on the context indicator, the one that was the least cited as of high quality by the teachers was having a supportive school or district. So that may be the context that might be most lacking in these frontier schools. On the treatment side, we found very strong results for whether the class was academically challenging. So... That's an interesting finding in that 
these schools are able to do something that both the teacher and the students perceive as rigorous. They were also pretty successful in covering science practices and learning objectives, but where they struggled was on the inquiry-based part of the design. So they struggled to have a, a syllabus that, that in, in our review of their syllabus appeared to be inquiry-based. They also struggled to some degree with having project-based and independent activities and with having an integrated use of technology. Um, and that showed up both from the teachers' reports and from the student surveys we did. As we discussed a little bit earlier, there's been a lot of conversation surrounding AP expansion in recent years, specifically regarding how under-resourced schools, potentially like the frontier schools in your study, can offer quality AP courses or whether or not content is being watered down, as, as some critics have contended. With that backdrop, I'd be curious to know, what do you think are the implications here? What have you learned about advanced placement that could be of use to policymakers, practitioners, school leaders, or, or other stakeholders? Yeah, well, in terms of be, being watered down, I, I don't think that that is, is necessarily the case. So we found, for example, that students were 37% more likely, percentage points more likely to say that their course was intellectually challenging if they were randomly assigned to the treatment group versus the control group, which were taking other science classes. They were 39 percentage points more likely to say they often receive homework. They were 19 percentage points more likely to say the teacher set high standards. So it doesn't appear that the class is watered down in terms of it being challenging and rigorous. That said, we didn't find that treatment students were any more likely to use interactive simulations, to create graphical presentations, to develop collaborative projects, to practice concepts, or to work independently or to present what they learned. So, so that suggests that there's something a little bit lacking in either the teacher's ability to know how to implement a classroom that features both technology and independent activities, and also potentially it also suggests a lack of access to the technology that would facilitate that kind of use of interactive simulations, graphical presentations. In fact, you know, when we look at the control group means, they were all pretty low, so around 20 to 30 percent in the control group had access to the technology, and we found no statistically significant difference in the AP classes. So there appears to be an actual lack of the technology rather than the teachers knowing how to use it. I know this might be a little bit beyond the scope of your study, but um, I was curious if your team had given any thought to some potential solutions or at least a way forward for, for schools or even practitioners who are trying to implement AP science with a little bit more rigor or fidelity. Yeah, there was an interesting challenge when we, we got the, this grant was funded through the National Science Foundation, and the National Science Foundation had an interest in us evaluating advanced placement classes implemented with perfect fidelity. And we, we were suggesting to them that it would make a lot more, more sense to look at how is AP being actually implemented and to evaluate its actual implementation. So I definitely think that our results might stimulate some interest in figuring out how can we get either better teacher training to help teachers understand how to use this integrated technology, maybe better support from districts for doing a, a more inquiry-based approach, and maybe access directly to the technology, which, was, uh, which would probably require additional funding. And are there opportunities here, do you think, for future research, either for your team or for others working in, in this field of advanced placement? Yeah, so, so certainly our results really relate to two things. One, specifically these AP biology and chemistry. So it's not clear to what extent our results translate to other AP classes. So that's an interesting line of research um, that someone could take up. And then secondly, it'd be interesting to understand the difference between implementation of advanced placement classes in these frontier schools versus implementation in schools that have been doing it for 20 years or so. So understanding that that heterogeneity in AP um, implementation of AP science in particular would be an interesting uh, future source of research. Well, this truly is intriguing research. And for our listeners who'd like to learn more about it, I encourage them to go read the full paper. Again, it's titled Life on the Frontier of AP Expansion. Can schools and less resourced communities successfully implement advanced placement science courses? And it was published in Educational Researcher. Mark Long, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, and I really enjoyed uh, speaking with you. 
Thanks for listening to this week's Research Minutes, presented by the CPRE Knowledge Hub. For more episodes or to subscribe to the series, you can find us on your favorite podcast app, on YouTube, or at cprehub.org. That's C-P-R-E-Hub.org. To share your thoughts on today's episode or suggest future topics, you can find us on Twitter at cprehub.org.